be, but, you know, it could be anything. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sup Talk Radio. As always, I am the driver and conductor of this possible train wreck of a show tonight. As always, I am proud to have some very close personal friends, former guests. We have Mr. Steve Hanna, the man with the best mustache in the business of Crystal Pump. We've got Juan Salazar with maybe the best beard or second best beard in the bismuth from Gaines Express. And of course, hey. the hottest reviewer, educator, whatever you want to call it, Mr. Lucas Kalin of Get Big in the 973. How is everybody? Great. Good, Take good. It. So glad to have you all here tonight. Steve, we'll start off with you, brother. Give us an update. What's up with the brand? What's up with you? Your training? What's going on? Ooh, the saboteur of the train wreck comes first. Uh, with the brand, I, I just ran out of Blue Raz. People are stuck with one flavor now, and it's Fruit Punch, which uh, at the surface, people just don't want to buy Fruit Punch. I will say, Crystal Bum Fruit Punch is delicious. As long, it takes one or two times to get over the lion's mane taste. Once you're past the lion's mane, Fruit Punch is delicious. Uh, once I'm out of the fruit punch, one of the reasons instead of ordering more and restocking and having three flavors, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to tweak the formula a little bit with the next round. And you know, honestly, it's a topic that maybe you guys would be interested in is that, you know, what resonates with the customers, what is still on brand as far as, uh, delivering with performance and make sure that I'm, mean, you know, walking that fine line to make sure I'm hitting both and still giving my customers what I think is the best product. But also with ingredients that they recognize uh, that that aren't breaking my bank, yeah. You know, so I can keep the price fair. Um, well, wait, a minute. let's open that, that up sense. there. So, so what? So, what's the question, Steve? Is it more the ingredients, more the flavors? What are you looking for the panel to answer? Well, it's more about you know when it comes to choosing ingredients. Like for example, I'll just uh, elevate TP. I like elevate TP. Every product I've taken with elevate TP, I've been very happy with the performance boost in. My customers don't have any clue what elevate TP is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And so that becomes a question of, is it worth putting it in my pre-workout that I think works or do I make cost conscious decisions to put, you know, something like uh, nitrosogene or vasodrive or, or something that would be more recognizable that would still deliver a uh, tremendous performance boost, but it is different. I mean, they, they don't do the same thing. Uh, yeah, I guess. So it's funny, Lucas and I just did a review earlier today on another product that has elevate ATP in it. Um, but I guess that comes down to your, your customer base. Cause you're, you're obviously a, a strength man or strength, uh, strength athlete, obviously strength athletes don't want pump. You want more drive endurance. Things are going to boost ATP like your elevated, like your elevate ATPs, your mushroom blends, your cordyceps, all that stuff. But if your demographic is more of the, the lifters, the gym goers might, might be worth going somewhere else. So going to a different ingredient panel, but I'll open up to you guys. Uh, yeah, I know for me, I would probably say like, you know, go with what the customer is going to want to prefer at the end of the day. Not saying you got to cater everything to them, but I think it is definitely helpful to take what they have into consideration because at the end of the day, they're going to be the ones to purchase. But I would still say, cause I'm going through the same thing with mine where make tweaks where you're comfortable with that. You can still call your own and that you can still feel comfortable. Like I made these tweaks not because, you know, I'm trying to get feedback from them. And on top of that, it is me still. It's something that I would put, something that I would stand behind because there's nothing that, that you know, people love more than than seeing a business take in feedback and making those changes, not to accommodate them, but just to be like, look, I'm willing to make these changes off of the feedback that I've gotten, if that makes sense. Yeah, I got you. No, I, piggyback off that, I totally agree. I think it's a very fine line of what you want and what you want to add to your product. And then obviously catering to the consumers. Um, Nitrosogene and Vasodrive AP, like you brought up, are big hitter names. I mean, they're great for pump. I absolutely love both of them. Um, that vasodilation aspect on them is pretty cool. Um, and then Ella ATP, like we talked about before, me and Sean talked about a little bit. I mean, it's great for that performance and that power output strength. Um, and it helps with that nitric oxide production uh, or ATP production, uh, excuse me. Um, and I think it's great, but I think at the end of the day, you know, taking that feedback from the consumers and, you know, inputting that into the new product is really what matters. Um, it sucks, but it is a compromise, like everybody says. So I, I would agree on it. I think it's, you know, recognizing it and what the consumers recognize. Yeah. So, it's kind of a, sorry, I want to bring on. up your ingredient panel for a minute here. Just, oops, wait a minute. 
Um, What's time I mean, for the Zeno, John? Is there something specific? Is there something specific, or is it just you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, or just time for a facelift, or what are you thinking? Well, you know, I don't want to make you know ordering another round. I would like for the performance element of Crystal Pump to feel like you know for ninety percent of people who take it to feel like a, a an upgrade. You know, um, that or well, I mean, I can't I can't bring the price down realistically. Um, I was going to say that or I could lower the price, but it's just not realistic without gutting it um but, you know certain things like bumping up the alpha gpc to uh to 600 um i'm gonna get rid of the synephrine instead of uh you know 10 xing it to, to get more out of it um i do consider something like uh because it sounds stupid and it, this is one of the ones of letting the customers kind of drive the ship i don't think i need uh black pepper extract if i've got estrogen mm -hmm. you know I really don't think it's necessary. It does not break the bank to put it in there. So I kind of don't care. Um, but really, you know, it's really, it's the LVTP, if I'm being honest, that's the one, that's the ingredient that stands out to me as far as a uh, premium ingredient that is not driving in necessarily a premium audience. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to strength training, it's, it's one of the only ingredients that could do something for you, you know, like realistically add a rep to your set, um, you know, make you feel like you could add something to the bar. You know, it's tough to say that any supplement is going to add pounds to the bar, but if you can get an extra set in because you've got better endurance, that's where I would say something like that is, is possible. Do you collect, I'm sure you collect all your, all your customer data. Would it be worth sending out like a survey monkey or something to the, to the customers asking about the elevate ATP? You know, that's a good point. I haven't thought about asking directly about elevate ATP. Um, or is it, is it elevate ATP? I've always called it elevate ATP. Um, it, tomato, tomato. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it is worth asking like certain ingredients. Um, I'm not positive that people know, know what Araya is. You know, it sounds a little ridiculous. That's, that's a pretty big yeah. name ingredient right now. Um, but to the normie person who scrolls past my ad, I guess as I'm tired of answering the question of like, 150 milligrams of caffeine, you know, from the average doofus who uh, looks at it, doesn't see that there's 150 caffeine and hydrous, 150 dicaffeine malate, and 200 of it. I mean, the Araya is pretty potent. Yep. Uh, you can definitely feel it. You can feel the, feel the mood elevation. Um, I don't know. It's just, I guess, me thinking about how can I sell more product because I would love to uh, successfully pay my bills uh, with just Crystal Pump, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that, those are the things that I think of that. And honestly, I think that's a nice, uh, a solid question for the round table at some point when it comes to like driving sales, uh, what you guys are doing to, um, to drive your sales. I also don't want to treat, you know, I know my cust current customers aren't idiots, but based on the comments that my ads will get, the general person who sees my ads might be an idiot. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> with the you cater to that or not, I don't think I should cater to it. Uh, maybe with the survey monkey, you ask about the elevate elevate ATP and maybe putting some flavors, be like, hey, here's some flavors we're thinking about. You might get more engagement or response back with true, the flavor the flavors, question too. Make them feel engaged. They yeah. go nuts for flavors. Yeah. They request the worst flavors sometimes, but they, they go nuts for them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but I think why just surveying my current because because my current customers, I care more about the new customers. Yeah. And if my current customers like the way it feels, I love the way it feels. You know, is it uh, how much change has to take place? What can I realistically change to improve the aspects for strength athletes um, or just improve your overall pre-workout experience yep. versus, you know, something like the uh, the pump enhancers is just having a separate product, you know, because mm -hmm. that's a, yep. a definite possibility is just to sell a separate product. I kind of dog people for, you know, if you if your product has no pump ingredients and you sell the pump product separate. However, it could just be what I end up having to do um, at some point. I mean, I, I'm not going to do it now. Yeah, um, yeah. To be able to make everyone happy, so to speak. Yep. So when you're going through an overhaul too, I don't know how much you want to share. I know you gave little teasers of V2 of your pre. I mean, have you shared some of the same? I think you've shared some of the same ideas with that Steve's vetting here with me or us. Yeah. So uh, I believe you're talking about pre gains volume two. So mm -hmm. for volume two, it's pretty much I have this idea in my head where I want to keep remixing stuff. I'm really I'm a huge music guy. So I always 
that's why I called it volume two because I'm really big on music. So I always want to make some different, keep the same type of uh, idea, the same type of general idea, but find ways to do a remix and do like some changes. Make it a separate product, of course, but it, you still can see where the continuation is, if that makes sense. So I'll have some base ideas that were from the original, but on volume two, we're taking some stuff out and putting some stuff in and maybe a new design, maybe an upgraded logo. But the base of the ingredient profile, there's some things that will are there. Maybe the dosage just change. And, you know, like I said, we're doing some swaps. But, yeah, like I, I think it's always good to change it up some, you know, always keep people guessing because. For me, it, it, it keeps me going to you. If, if all you have to offer is just different flavors, then I'm going to kind of get used to your ingredient profile after a while. So mm -hmm. if I always have something that's going to be different, not all the way different, but it's still different where the ingredient profile still shows it's on par with the brand, then I want to gravitate because I want to see what other cool stuff that they'll come with. Yep. So don't let you take it out Whitney Houston putting in Biggie Smalls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a, so you got the original song and then you got the remix and the remix is you can still hear the the original hug maybe you know maybe a, a callback to the to a verse but you know exactly where it came from you can see exactly where you, where it would be a remix and that's what pre games volume two is it still has some basis of the original but we got some things changed up you know. Uh, Sean Lucas, I sent y'all like some stuff yeah. as far as artwork, so you can still see where some of the stuff is still the same, but we made I made some changes and upgraded some stuff, if you will, to be where it keeps people on their feet. So what's what's the latest, brother? When are you hoping to have it in hand? Uh, right now, I'm still I'm not in a hurry. Right now, I'm still not in a hurry, but I will I am reach I'm going to be reaching out to the manufacturer hopefully either this week or next week just for the sample. Because uh, for me, the biggest thing is I want to make sure that the flavor is to my expectations to where I want it because I already have everything else done. The, the label design is done. The artwork is done. Yep. The supplement facts panel is done. Everything is done. And I just had to go set it to print. But I want to make sure that the label, not the label, I'm sorry, the, the sample tastes the way I expected it to taste. Because if and I want to make sure that if, if there needs to be any tweaks, I take my time with it and I just keep it going because that the flavor that I have in my head. I want I, I'm a very picky person. So if I have that flavor in my head already and I have it in my taste buds, I want to make sure that that's what I'm tasting. Juan, do you want to share what it is? Or you want to keep it under wraps? I want to keep it under wraps for right now. OK, so look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take the cat out of the bag, but if people follow you intently and see the type of things you review if they could sift they could sift through it and get an idea because they because you because you've got a little tell on a lot of your reviews but we'll leave yes. it there yeah so exactly and uh the one thing i will say is that i know it's to me it's a very hard flavor because it's a specific type of flavor and a lot of times that specific type of flavor you kind of you could go too sweet where it tastes like like medicine and syrup and you got to I want to make sure that balance and act is there. So, Lucas, you've been quiet, man. Chime in here, brother. Hey, I'm sitting on the, the edge of my seat over here just waiting for somebody to accidentally say it. Um, I'm excited, man. I think it adds to the validity of the brand. Um, it's cool to see the thought behind it. Um, it's not like, hey, man, I just want to take all your money, change up the formula. It's this is volume two. We're remixing it. We're keeping the simple basis of it all. Um, and I think that's cool. And I think it adds to the experience of Gaines Express. I mean, that is Gaines Express. Um, I have pre gains right here, right? Hey. Little promo, right? Um, I think it's great. I think it's super cool. I think it's, uh, you know, adding to the legacy, right? It's uh, yeah. Call of Duty 2, right? Like it's just, yeah. it's building, right? And I think that's cool. Um, and I think that it's catering to your audience and building that brand loyalty, which I think differentiates yourself from a lot of these brands behind me or, you know, other brands that I talk about. And I think that's super cool. Um, and, to, you know, go back and forth, you know, Steve with Crystal Pump, I think it's cool, you know, focusing on all those different ingredients and trying to come up with a different profile and cater to all those different types of people. And, you know, like you said, with your ad and, you know, it may not appeal to those people that, you know, probably don't know too much about pre-workout. Like you said, area, or I say, um, or you said Araya, I say area. 
uh, area yeah, uh, yeah, it's a it's a super cool ingredient. 200 milligrams, super. People say it's edgy, right? It does have that stimulatory effect, the euphoria, the mood elevation. It's a super freaking cool ingredient. Like the research behind it, I love it. I fall in love with it. But that person scrolling through your feed is going to know nothing about it, right? And I think that, you know, you focusing on that core group and everybody always says a repeat customer is better than a new customer. And I think focusing on that core group of, hey, listen, I love the performance. I love the endurance. I love the euphoric. 150 milligrams of caffeine combining it with other stuff hits hard as hell, right? Um, And I think it's pretty cool. And I think it's all about today's world of finding that customer experience and the customer journey. Um, that really fires me up. I mean, look at the brands behind me. There are brands that, you know, get a product and then come out with another one. It's okay. Right. But then there's brands that take you through that journey that make you feel like you're a part of the brand and you're being catered to. And I think you both are doing it in different aspects. And I think it's pretty cool. So that's just kind of my take on everything. Yeah. I mean, as soon as I said out loud that I was thinking about maybe getting rid of a Raya, I'm thinking, what if I, I, I can swear on this, right? Of course. What a, fu- yeah, that's right. Rob, I'm sorry. on here. What a fucking idiot would I take a riot out of this? You know, like that's like the whole feeling. Oh, because no. uh, without the riot, if it was just more caffeine, it would ruin. Man, not really. There's no way it would feel similar. Uh, no, it's so it's that lift said it out loud. I'm like, what am I thinking? Getting rid of the riot, fool. But so you mentioned though too. I think you you mentioned nitrosagene, which trademark, which would drive your price up. I would think. No, you know. uh that's one of the reasons that I was considering something like Elevate TP is that if nitrosagene or, um, you know, Vaser Drive, how would that affect the, the overall cost if I, you know, did a little bit of a haircut on some of the ingredients instead of cutting the dosage down, I just cut them out. Yeah. Um, you know, like what could I do to continue the premium brand that I consider the product to be? Um, drive it forward without driving the price up, but would also, you know, exceeding customer expectations um but that just might just have to come from like a separate product because not everybody's going to care about increasing pump even though the name is crystal pump i just think it's a funny name i think it's an iconic name i think it's perhaps the greatest name in the history <laughs> it was how you really feel we work out names perhaps many have said this and so it's you know could i add more pump yeah and there's pretty straightforward ways on how to do it um a lot of people have asked for glycerol. No way that happens. I'm not going to do a 30 gram scoop. Um, people underdose. That's the biggest problem I have right now is people think that putting two, three grams of glycerol works. I mean, studies are showing you need 10, 15, 20 grams of glycerol. And that's going to. 20 feels cr- twenty feels crazy. Yeah. 10 feels great. I, I love 10 grams of glycerol. Um, there's a product that I, I've taken not too long ago that I like so much that I've you know thought about what could I do to steal this idea? I'm not going to name the product because I might just come a little close to stealing that idea, but it is, you know, some of these products are so good on their own, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in crystal pump. You know, it could be a set, you know, pump shots with a Z or something, you know, something can go by the gym or the gas station, whatever. No, no Z's. Z's are outdated. I can't stand people still doing the labs. L A B Z. Come on. That's Bush league. That's just me, man. LABZ is on the out with you, huh? Oh, it's been on the out for years. Cause you because I see all these LABZs and all underdose crap. That's just that's just me. Maybe I'm just PTSD with that term. I've seen you some of those screenshots. All those uh horrific Amazon brands have Z in it. There, I mean, it'll be like Joker mode, dog shit. You know, the <laughs> worst pre-workout I've ever seen in my life. It'll have like one and a half grams of citrulline. Where'd that number come from? Uh yeah. 400 milligrams caffeine. And uh, it'll be like 400 sold this month on Amazon. How? Who's buying this? You know, take mom's credit card away from these kids. Like, who is buying this crap? One, I see the wheels turning here. What's it? What, what do you go ahead, bro? First off, I kind of is that an indirect shot at me? Because if, if you look right here, Z, no, oh. okay, so I'm not uh, oh, so listen I'm on to you, Sean. I'm I was gonna... cooking it over here too. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. I no, 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 no. I'm not backtracking. I'm not backtracking. I'm being honest with you. I'm looking straight in the face here. I'm not back. It's the labs. I'm not a fan of. Um, you know what? I'm your favorite guest, so I know it's not a shot. All right. Well, I'm see you later. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh shit. That that's a sub talk radio moment. I I was about to start checking. Like yo, like I know Sean did just kick me out. <laughs> it's a per- perfect uh, meme right there. Everybody laughing. 
No, but seriously though, bro, it's it's the labs. It's the labs I have PTSD from. I'll be completely honest with you. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Um, no, no. So I think I told Lucas this before. I kind of think that some of these companies are fudging their numbers and they're not really. And I guess they think that a lot of us are kind of dumb about it. But I think a lot of these companies are fudging some of their numbers. And I'll give you a hypothetical. And again, I could be just shoot throwing shit at a wall. Let's, no say I got a, let's say I got a company, right? Let, let, let's say I have this, right? I have my pre workout my protein. Let's say I have, I actually ordered a thousand units, right? Keep my cost low, order a thousand units. I could say I have a limited stock of 200. And let's say I sell 200 on the site. Technically, I sold out. Technically, they're flying like hotcakes. But in reality, and then they, they'll pull the, oh, we just restock. You know, we got with the manufacturer, we restock. I mean, you really didn't. You had it with you the whole entire time. You just kind of like, you you finagled the sales a bit to where it gives you the optics that you sold out really fast or that you sold out of a quick limited stock, if that makes sense. I think some of these companies are kind of fudging their numbers like that. And I don't know. I could be I wrong. Just, like, Cause on Amazon, it's Amazon's data. Like Amazon is the one saying like 400 a month of like, what is it? Was it, I know, just PR or ER, I think was the name of the product. Ton sold this month, not a special formula at all. Uh, it was like 25, it was cheap, but it was uh, very unimpressive. But according to Amazon, they sell hundreds, uh, you know, like that one might've even been over 500 a month. I mean, I was blown away. Damn. I don't know, man. Some's not, some's not, some of these numbers don't add up to me. Some of these numbers don't look right to me. So I always... I always got my little conspiracy hat on whenever I start looking at some of this stuff because I'm like, nah, there's no way. I call I call a bunch of malarkey on this stuff, and I don't use malarkey a lot. <laughs> oh my Tell God. you one thing, they're not getting repeat customers. <laughs> yeah, like for me, I have repeat customers. I have a lot of repeat customers, and that's why, like for me, whenever um, whenever I'm I'm gonna work on uh, pre games volume two, I made the announcement that if you order the original pre games, when volume two comes out. As a thank you, I'm gonna give you half off automatically whenever it comes out. Just as a thank you, and just because I know you'll come back. And since you're gonna wow. come back, let me give you half off of a new product. Yeah, man. Do you have that as a setting on your store to be able to uh, to track who bought? Yeah, the last yeah. man. The shop yeah. Yeah, yeah, shop yeah. yeah. I have to play around and see uh, two kind of customer data. I don't know. If, uh, I feel like that sounds difficult, but. You make it sound no, like, like so I, just, thing uh, I, I just go through uh, I just go through uh, the purchase orders and I'll just see who got the pre games and then uh, okay. start sending emails from there. See, so talk about talk about marketing here and, and advertisement. You've been doing that. You were doing a promo a promo on Facebook, I think. So where oh, I did you get the ads on Facebook? Yeah, it was I feel what it was buy X and you got a free shaker bottle if I remember right. Oh yeah, wow yes. Um, impress. I, I don't check the Facebook. It gets comments every once in a while. I don't check the Facebook. So yeah, I did do um, a promotion with the free shaker cup with every order. That one went get, crazy. You get a good ROI. You try, so obviously you're not tracking it then to see if it's worth the money put into Facebook. Oh, so I just put it into um, into Meta, and um, uh, okay, it's a. Uh, I feel like I don't select. You know, I it is, Facebook will like make the tweaks to the to the ads to like increase the reach, and I think it's showing them on Facebook instead of like they're made for Instagram. Yeah, um, okay. so like the sizing and stuff is off on Facebook anyway, but the. Um, the promotion for the free shaker cup was crazy. That that did amazing. Um, Everybody wants something free. Yeah, I, I was doing because the shaker cups are they're. I mean, now that they're in hand, they don't feel like they're the cheapest thing in the world. Now that I'm giving away for free, um, but they're not that expensive. You know, it's cheaper than doing free shipping. Shipping is so expensive right now. Yeah, that it was cheaper than doing free shipping, and I think to a customer, I mean, it stays with you. It feels better than getting. Eleven dollars off or whatever your shipping cost is to just get a free shaker cup. Um, yeah, it's weird how people I, think like you, you do free something here, but it still stays on the other. It's all about like the, like like one said earlier, some deception. I feel like it's a shell game sometimes. You still get a deal, but it's like, do you want a free shaker or do you want free shipping? But meal was probably the same price anyway. You know? Yeah, yeah, and it's like the uh, the perceived value. I mean, perceived value is everything. Yeah, of course. And it's not to, to trick them. You know, I just want them to feel like. They're of getting course. the best deal. I think people really like the idea of the shaker. It was a full size shaker. Um, they're like the blender bottle shakers. They're not like the garbage, you know, like something you get from Timu or Wish. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I was doing um, 
Th that was my best month ever. Um, normally I do between, um, like three and eight sales a day. And yeah. I was doing like 10 to 15. Wow. Interesting. And, uh, that, that was, that was a, a great ad campaign for me. Interesting. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the collabs here. We'll go to Lucas here. I know you're not a brand owner, like neither am I, but, uh, collabs. I mean, if you could, if you could create your ideal collab, whether it's a person, a food, a company, what would your ideal collab be, Lucas? You've Ooh. been doing it. You've been the short, you've been in the industry a short time, but you've tested like thousands of products. I feel like. Yeah. I mean, I've had my hands on, I would say uh, a, quite a bit of products, maybe a concerning number of products. Um, and especially with the pre-workouts and caffeine I take, and it's a little concerning, but, uh, collab wise, I mean, that is a tough one. Um, I don't know why off the top of my head, it just came to me. Like I was always a big Yankees fan growing up in Jersey, maybe kind of a baseball collab. I mean, maybe it's because I've seen all this stuff with ghosts collabing with, uh, the Phillies and the Cubs recently. And so maybe that sparked it in me, but maybe a collab with a baseball team or a sports team and a uh, supplement. I mean, that would be interesting. I don't know if I've seen anything like that quite yet, um, but I'm definitely going to have to think about that a little bit more. I don't have anything specific, specific off my head. Juan, take money aside. What would you, would you want to do a collab? Are you favor for collabs or against them or? No, I'm with Lucas. I want to do something different. I, I kind of have an idea in my head. Like I, and I was kind of like, I was kind of shooting the shit with someone uh, that has a streetwear brand. And I was like, I would love to do something completely different that has nothing to do with supplements as far as a collab, because you get two completely different audiences and you put them together. And I know for me, uh, it was one was it was the streetwear brand. Okay. And I already was I already had in my head like how it would look, what it would how it would be called, and everything like that. And it was with the streetwear. And to me, I was like, that that actually sounds cool. Like, I would love to do something like that because it's a whole different audience. It's a big risk because you're putting money behind a whole audience that you that don't that doesn't understand the world yeah. that you're in. But imagine if it did like take off, like, oh my god, you get two completely different audiences and you put them together. Like it'll it would be incredible. I'll, that's the one that I would I would want to do, like a streetwear. Okay. I would love so for me. I'd create a protein powder. I'd pair up with pair up with Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> now, what would the macros work like on that? Well, yeah, that would be the thing is you'd have to work something out where where the fat is taken away. Like I go, I go to Cheesecake Factory twice a year on my indulgence is is they have a peanut butter Reese's peanut butter cup one. I don't know if you guys ever go there. Fifteen hundred calories for a slice. Ooh. you know I've, I've never been to Cheesecake Factory. What, oh, dude? I don't like cheesecakes. Never take your lady on a nice date, huh? Never... <laughs> I don't like cheesecakes. Uh, got a 12-page menu. Chick-fil-A, baby. <laughs> cheesecakes are terrible. I hate cheesecakes. Ugh. Wait, hold on. All right, I'm with you on that. Cheesecakes. I'm not a big cheesecake guy either, but Cheesecake Factory, the story behind the whole like company is crazy. But like like Steve just said, I think you just said, like a 15-page menu. It's freaking nuts, yes. man. It's, it's the crazy. experience. It's, uh, friend, there's, there's one right there by uh where i'm at there's like there's one like right close to me and i just i always see it and i'm like eh. they have cakes too dude they have like just more cheesecake for me and sean cakes. yeah so steve i don't need you... any noise i'm on a cut right now so i don't even need it <laughs> steve what would you what would you do something i mean would it be would it be brand related or no so i mean i've done a i did a, a collaboration with a metal band crypt the uh crystal pump crypt edition it was not just a cool label the uh, Butchered by Blue Raspberry was the, uh, I've done that collaboration. So I think, you know, like Juan said, I think that having a, um, a non-traditional collab is, uh, you know, there's a bunch of people who bought only the Crypt version because I know that they're probably fans of the band or uh, friends of the band or whatever. Uh, it allows you to get just a different audience. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was something that was cool. I would do it again. You know, like I would do, um, yeah, there's a few bands that like I, I, I would work with, but Sadly, they just got probably a little too big for uh, for a Crystal Pump partnership. Um, and uh, but I would do, you know, and you don't just mean like um, an athlete signature blend or anything like, no, like whether a, it's a food company, whether it's an athlete, whether like one said something obscure, whatever. I mean, half the is the obvious choice for, you know, for Strawman. He's by far the most famous 
person. Yep. Um, I think Eddie Hall's a douche, so I wouldn't want Eddie. Um, That's crazy. I'll make sure I tag him on this clip. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, maybe he'll respond. Uh, he, I, I think he's more of a YouTuber at this point. You know, he'll he'll post a video like, "I swap diets with my daughter for the day." Like I say, you know, it'll be a video like that. Like, what is that? Um, and uh, you know, Thor B. But it's also funny. He, hate, you know, him and Thor don't like each other. But it's um, Thor's a huge name. He's got millions of followers. Uh, yep. maybe millions plural. Uh, nobody else is coming close to that level of fame. Uh, so definitely would be if I could choose an athlete, someone like Thor. Um, okay. I feel like that's totally on brand too. Um, you know, uh, obscure things, maybe, maybe another band collaboration. Um, uh, something like that. I mean, I'll, I'll talk your off all day about the different collabs I could do. If I did like a true brand to brand, like, um, you know, we've seen someone like Panda do, does the, the collabs with each other. Yeah. Um, you know, it has to make sense for both companies. Definitely. You know, both, I assume that you'd want to have two separate audiences come together of similar size so that it benefits both of you similarly. Yep. Because like right now for me, like if I asked Rob, like, hey, man, let's do a collab. It'd be, he would say, fuck no one. He'd laugh, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't make any sense for him. Yeah. Because he's way bigger than I am. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. But cool dude, you know, like the guys, like when it comes to other brands, I think are cool. Like the owners of um, Psycho Pharma, cool dudes. I've met them several times. Uh, and now Eric Bugenhagen's the owner of them. He was a cool dude. Before he was a, a part owner, he was my dream uh, sponsored athlete. But now he's a rival owner. So mm -hmm. out of the ring there. Okay. So guys, what what what's the next big? If you had to put a, a, a pin in it, what's the next big category here? I think pre work has to start to level off. I mean, Lucas, what are you seeing? Are you are you finding yourself reviewing? It's hard to keep up with you sometimes, brother. I love you, but it's hard to keep up. Are you finding more products coming in for different categories, or are you kind of still in the like the pre workout stage, pretty much? Um, so I think it's funny. I think a lot of people think I'm a, a pre-workout guy and to a certain degree, yes. Um, but I find a lot of interest in a lot of other products. Um, and one that I can't really reveal too much specific wise, but there's a lot of greens products coming out. And I think you're going to see an emergence of health products or health oriented products. Yeah. Um, and then also maybe that clear way isolate might keep sneaking its way up. I mean, ghost just did their clear way isolate um, and it's their first one, I believe. Um, so that was super interesting. So I think we're going to see a lot more of those older trends reemerging. Um, and you know, maybe those pre-workout trends like the daily driver, um, the one scoop max kind of leveling off. And I yep. think it's going to be very different. Yeah, it's interesting with the greens though. Cause I know the biggest thing is they just don't, it's hard. It's hard to know what the proper dosage is for greens, but it's like, when you look at them, you see people like town, Oh, it's the best greens got seven grams, you know, and the scoop is like super small. And I think sometimes it's still deceptive, whether it's intentional or not. That they're like, oh, forget it. I'm not gonna have some broccoli. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip my salad today. I'm just gonna take a scoop of greens, but it's not the same. No, yeah, I, I would agree. It's not the same. And I think I think you know, before Glaxon went through its whole phase of you know issues recently, uh, I was a big advocate for their greens. It tasted absolutely amazing. They had some pretty cool ingredients in there. Um, and now you have competitors like AG1, you know, killing yeah. the market, making so much money. Um, but I think we're gonna see a lot more smaller brands trying like weasel in there. Um, and you know, like always, I'll try and to uh, educate and inform people about dosages, but I think that's that's a very important part is, you know, how much of this antioxidant blend do I need? How much of this, you know, immunity blend do I need? Do I need a uh, spectra or do I need, you know, an estrogen for absorption with a green? Um, so it's interesting. And I think that's the main point is you don't really know what you're getting. And I think the education needs to be next leveled on that product. So it might be a little hard. Yeah. Juan, what do you think? What's the next big trend? What are you following? So I'm with you, uh, Lucas, as far as like greens. I do see some uh, some more greens coming out. But, I mean, just like you said, I mean, are we going to get proprietary blend greens? Because, I mean, if that's the case, it's just going to be overpriced. Like, what are you getting? You don't know. Like, we, nobody knows. And a lot of times, you know, and the, I think the funny part is that the manufacturer can tell you exactly what's there. They just don't want to disclose it. Like, the owner of the business doesn't want to disclose it. That's, that's the kind of like the weird part. Well, I, uh, I agree with that. I totally agree with that. It's um, I would say it's a balance because there are 
patented ingredients that do have those blends that, you know, the company won't disclose, but there are companies that do have those blends that they know that aren't going to tell you what it is. And that's a great point. Yeah. And, and to me, it's just like, I mean, we're starting to see a lot of brands like including myself, you know, and also, you know, including Lucas, which well, what you always stand for in your reviews, which I like is that, you know, we're starting to see an emergence of people, business owners, really, and reviewers like you pushing out the transparency uh, agenda. Right. We got to keep pushing out transparency. We need a full transparent panel because, I mean, nothing's worse than a proprietary blend to me. Mm -hmm. And a lot, um, if you look at a lot of these greens, a lot of the greens are proprietary blends. And maybe it's just what what are brands hiding that are proprietary blends and greens? What are they hiding? So there's that. So yeah, I do see greens coming out, but it's going to be a hard, hard up uphill battle unless you know, one or two brands come out with greens that are completely transparent. But how, so do, you, there's how, do, you that. how do you come out with the, how do you come out with it one where it's okay. One scoop equals three bananas, two apples, five stalks of celery. I mean, there was multivitamins years ago that would say, Oh, you know, there is six, you know, six, six broccolis in here and, and five, this, I don't know. If, I don't know if they're doing prop blends intentionally. I think it's because how do you actually weigh out, you know, a dehydrated, six dehydrated apples. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm explaining yeah. that right, but you know what I'm saying? No, I get what you're saying, but I also think also at the same time, too, it depends on which manufacturer you're dealing with. Yeah. So I, I do believe that like manuf there are some manufacturers that do have, that can tell you exactly what's in there because, I mean, how how do they know what they have in there? There There's, there's yeah. a breakdown somewhere. There, somewhere someone has the breakdown of what's in there. Someone has it. Yep. It's just how much digging do you want to do to get that information is, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah, and yeah. you want to make it more accessible to the customer. Yeah. But for me, I, I do see a lot of hydration coming out. So I do see a hydration blend come in, especially during summertime. Uh, one thing I will say, too, and uh, this is not a plug or I'm not it's not an intended plug or a shout out. Protein snacks, I think, are going to start creeping up very, very much so because, again, Prime Bites, they're they're killing it when it comes to the snacks. And I am seeing a whole bunch of like brands bringing their, they're revamping the looks on their protein snacks. As far as the wrapping, they're redoing their design, their logos, all that stuff. And like I said, I do see protein snacks making like a, a big wave very soon, if not already. But is it really uh, making a wave though? Cause I feel like five drop off last year and five more pick up where it's consistent. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, if you look at some of these, uh, well, maybe not snacks, but maybe like, well, snacks and food. Like Fruitful Ghost just foods. put out their cereal, right? Ghost just put out cereal right now. And uh, Prime Bites just, re just released their new um, their new flavor. And I do believe uh, there's a cookie brand. I can't remember what it is. It's a big-ass cookie. And it's like 700 calories for a cookie. I can't remember the name. My but cookie they, dealer? My cookie dealer? Yes, yeah, they they completely revamped their whole look, and it's more brighter. It's more appealing to the to the masses. So that's what I'm saying. Like whenever, like I think there's gonna be a whole wave of snacks coming out, whether it's yeah. you know protein food or protein snacks. I do see a wave of that coming out very soon. Hmm. See, what do you think? We we haven't gone to you. What do you see? I what do you the, uh, touching on like the protein like novelty items is uh is an interesting one because yeah, Ghost did just come out with the cereal. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see other big brands uh, experimenting with novelties like that. Because, um, I mean, how much it's at Walmart. You know, how much money is there to get a cereal purchased by Walmart? You know, that's yeah. got to be million dollar deals happening. I don't know how much that's profit, but million dollar deals for dealing with Walmart. So I'd imagine yeah. that trying to get that mass appeal with novelty items or protein snacks or, um, Things like that, you know, that could be an upcoming trend. I'm surprised that clear protein is still on the move. Uh, it felt like a year and a half ago it was peaking and it just kind of uh, hasn't ended. <laughs> I, I I don't care too much for the uh, for the clear proteins. I don't think they mix well at all. Um, the stickiness that they get is crazy. Yeah. The only, the, only one, place, the only one I, ha I haven't, I haven't tried it yet. I think Lucas is, is the, uh, the Nutribio because I have a defomer, uh, I guess a defomer or something in there. Yeah. I need to uh, try that. I hate the foam. 
I started, I actually started you a friend of mine because he starts taking uh, clear protein after he works out because it digests quick and easy, doesn't weigh him down instead of having like a whey shake. And I started doing that, but I haven't, I haven't tried the NutriBio, all normal foamy. I mean, I'll give it 30 seconds. No, it's give it four hours before the foam goes away. But it's but super foamy. You kind of get that layer on yeah. top. Um, I don't even know what I would call that, but it's, it's kind of like, like with a highly brand cyclic dextrin with the old uh, glycofuse you used to get. Is that like kind of like layer on top? But I don't know if it's a mixability issue. I don't know what it is. It's the way uh, the air does. It's like a high, I, I, I went down the rabbit hole. It's like the hydrophobic and the hydrophilic and the water and the air and blah, blah, blah. If you want to try to experiment, any one of you guys that try clear proteins, leave it in your container, drink it, leave that foam in your container like overnight, and it turned into like a sponge. Mm. It was kind of gross. Awesome. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised uh, as far as industry tr trends. I would not be surprised to, to see the gray market, the, the gray area legality products like SARMs and stuff start to pop up in more people's stores. I really would not be surprised to see more uh, gray to even dark gray area supplements popping up on people's sites. Yeah, Just seems like, like it's that, becoming uh, quite the trend. That comes up in that every couple of years. I mean, you see, you see the spike and then the FDA knocks and it comes down again. It comes up and down, up and down. I don't think they'll ever go away, but anyway. Yeah. It seems like there's a bit more of an open, uh, open market on those right now than there was last year. So I wouldn't be surprised if that opened up some before closing back down again. Yep. And uh, you know, what are the other questions we had here? How come one doesn't train legs? Do you not train legs? Facts. Facts. Once a year. He sent me pictures. He's like, Sean, guess what I'm doing today? It's my yearly leg workout. This narrative has taken a life of its own. <laughs> Um, and I just trained legs today. <laughs> two sets of leg extensions is not training legs. No, it was just two stretch, uh, two sets of stretching. That's it. <laughs> oh, Body weight lunges, doing Hindu I, squats. I hate training legs. It's just because I gotta walk on my feet, man. That's the part I hate. Because whenever you train legs and you do a good job training legs, you gotta walk on your feet. Gravity hits your feet, and it's just the worst feeling. Like it sucks. If I could train, if I could walk on my arms, I wouldn't train arms. It just sucks. I hate training legs, man. And then, you know, there's some people that I know uh, that I talk to on a weekly basis. They don't train legs, and it just it makes me kind of think of like the microphone I have, right? So you see it where it's like the body is like this. <laughs> And then the legs are like this. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I see that and I'm like, I guess I'll train legs. I guess. Like, ah, I hate it. Do you, does your girlfriend like the way your legs are? Why? Yeah, your girlfriend. Yes, Juan, you. I'm gifted in my thighs. I have gifted thighs. I will say that. It, it's a bit of a gift. So, uh. My legs form pretty sh – they're, they're very shapely. So what you're saying is you, if your girlfriend's okay with it, then who are we to judge, brother? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I went like uh, – I went over a year without training my legs, and I'm assuming you're not lying about being gifted in the legs, but my legs are so big just without even training them that I didn't want to have the struggles with, you know, putting pants on, uh, finding pants that fit, uh, looking kind of stupid in your clothes, you know, I'm 5'7". When you've got huge legs, you kind of look like, um, I don't know the best way to describe it. I, I There's some really offensive ways. You know, you kind of look like your friend's um, washed up aunt, you know, when you're wearing the tight pants and you're 5'7". Uh, you know, you're just you're not wearing them right. You look off wearing them. And even if you've got all the confidence of your friend's washed up cool aunt, <laughs> they can still see what's going on. I'll take a, I'll take a step further. Sean, you're ready because you I don't know if you're gonna end up clipping this. Whenever I I don't like wearing jeans because when I wear jeans, I gotta start jumping around to get the pants over my ass. I feel like a bad bitch whenever I'm doing it. So I don't wet. So I hate training legs because my ass and my legs develop really quick. So I gotta start hopping around just to put the 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 jeans over my waist. So you're laying on the bed, like pulling them up as, as your girlfriend trying no, to. No, like, I'm over there. You know, I don't know if you ever seen like how some of the women are whenever they be jumping around trying to like you know jump so they can get their uh, pants over their ass. Like I, I be doing that. So that's why I don't wear jeans anymore. I don't wear jeans anymore. I rather wear 
uh, like joggers Stretch, and stuff. Stretchy pants. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. Maybe that's why I look like my friend's weird aunt is because my pants are loose. You know, I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. Oh my baggy God. pair of pants on these big legs. You know what's even worse though? Like when you have gifted quads or hamstrings, but the calves aren't as gifted, so it looks kind of weird. Kind of like Larry Wheels. That's the worst. Oh man, I would hate that. Oh, that sucks. I got decent calves. Do you guys know who the bodybuilder is? Nexilla Rubio Mascara. I don't know if you guys crazy have heard calves. Of him. Crazy calves. Twenty four inch. Twenty four inch calves alone. His physique is hideous. Oh, it is. But... I just thought it was funny with one talking about his calves. This guy's got probably the size of, size of my thighs, if not bigger. That the, 24 inches is colossal. His calves are so big. His body is huge. You know, like looking disgusting in a bodybuilding context isn't the worst thing. Um, his legs, I mean, that guy has the craziest lower body I've ever seen. This is yeah. the same thing like with those dads that be doing those barbecues outside. The backyard My cousin's back- husband, colossal calves. He rocks the New Balance's. Yeah, he his calves are legit. Like people, when we were at the Olympia, people come up to him and be like, "Hey, man, nice calves." You know, he doesn't look like he's in, in particular shape, but his calves are huge. <laughs> Call him Dad. Shoes. Patio calves. I wish I had yeah. those. Patio calves. I'm gonna get. A, I'm gonna build a patio in my backyard just so I can get those calves. Maybe those kind of calves will develop if I get a backyard patio. Get some New Balances, nice. some jean shorts with the belt you on. Get grass stains. Yeah, you need grass stains in those shoes though. <laughs> But you got the Hispanic butt one. That's all that counts. <laughs> Tell you, man, I'm waiting for this cut to be over, man. I'm about to. I I hate this fucking cut, man. I'm I'm, I'm all the way. I got all the way to the end of August. Why you Why are you cutting, dude? What girlfriend or yourself? Yeah, I, ha- I haven't done a cut in in so long that I wanted to kind of push my body, and then it was also a way for me to test my products because okay. I wanted to see like, okay, I'm a I'm gonna do a cut and. I think the best way to stand by your product is to push your body to a limit with your products only. Okay. Before so and after right work. now, I'm down uh, 17 pounds. Wow. Nice. What's a food? What's a food modification looking like? Are you following any any special protocols on food, or just more exercise? I'm following a trail of sadness and despair. <laughs> That's what I'm following. Um, I'm looking at it like a budget. So I can't go past 1,800 calories. Um, okay. So I'm on 1,800 calories a day. Um, two scoops of my protein. And then I work out fasted. Cardio's fasted. Uh, pretty much Stairmaster's fasted. All that stuff. And um, Greek yogurt, uh, non-fat, plain Greek yogurt is my best friend right now. And fat-free cheese. Have you picked up the the Oikos, the black label, the high protein? Uh, no, I haven't. Not yet. No, that's good. When you throw in a scoop of your protein, it's very good. It's a little bit of a sludge, but it's really good. So, oh no, no, okay. So I have tried the little cup, and I've tried. Uh, I'm not, I've tried my protein. I've tried other proteins, but it tastes like sour cream. So it's like a protein powder mixed with sour cream, kind of like a cheesecake feeling. And I hate cheesecake, so that's probably why I can't gravitate towards it. Yeah, it does taste like cheesecake. I actually add. Uh... I'll do Greek yogurt. I'll do a scoop of protein, and then I'll add sugar-free Jello. And I I love the cheesecake flavor, and so it gives me like a. It actually tastes like Sean. You probably like it. You know, if you guys don't like cheesecake, it might taste disgusting. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but I love it. You know, there's the the cheesecake flavor. There's a pistachio. Warren flavor. doesn't like cheesecake. I don't. I hate cheesecake. I hate it. You know. You know the crazy Maybe part the is pistachio. There's Here's the crazy the, part. Uh, I hate cheesecake. I don't think I've ever had cheesecake. I just don't like cheesecake. I don't like. I don't, why is cheese and cake in the same same thing? I I, I won't do it. I don't like I a won't. slice of American cheese in the cake. Dude. I don't hate stuff that I won't even try. <laughs> I could just look at it and be like, I'm not gonna try it. No, no, fuck that. I don't want it. It's gonna taste like ass, anyways. I don't even want it. Steve, go ahead. Give give us your give uh, us your 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 snack. I mean, I was gonna say. I mean, I go to the Indian restaurant. I, I order stuff, and I have no idea what it is. I don't even have the size clue what it's gonna look like. You know, I'll I'll eat it either way. I'll try anything. All right. So, guys, any questions for each other here as we wind down? Uh, Let me see. I I had one. Ah, okay. What is – okay, so I had a little series, right? It was called the L Express where I was talking about all the L's I've taken. What are some of – like, if you could name one mistake that you've made – 
where it's either it's probably costing you a lot of money or a lot of time, what would it be? The first batch of Crystal Pump that I bought, the seal on them sucked. And so they, you know, me being in Florida, that after a pretty short amount of time, the products were like rock hard. And having to convince people to pay even half price for this was brutal. It still worked, but it was like you had a fossil, I called it a fossilized pump. And uh, it was brutal. You know, what, what are the ethics of selling uh, broken seal products? It was a discount, you know that? Yeah, yeah. Who am yeah. I to say? But it you still worked. Them. You informed the people. They knew what they were getting into. So it's not like you're being deceptive. Yeah. You know, it's uh, when I found out, though, that, you know, it was compromised. I w that was terrible. And it's definitely affected, like, some of the more casual people who uh, would buy something just because I'm selling it, you know, yeah. uh, have not repurchased Crystal Pump since. But I'd say that that was a crucial error, was uh, having a pretty low-tier manufacturer put a, a really shitty seal on the product. Since this is my, since this is my podcast, and I get to say whatever, I think Lucas is probably trying the cock protein. Oh, dude, that was, yeah. If we want to go into trying bad products, we could go down the rabbit hole, but that cock protein was, uh, it was horrific. Um, unfortunately, you know, I try and be positive, but you know, I even did market research, bought a couple grass fed proteins myself and it just was not digestible. It was definitely, uh, one of, uh, the worst decisions I made. So yes, what was it? Please. Um, it was a brand, a white level, a uh, white labeled brand called Cock Protein. Um, it came in a chocolate flavor um, and a salted caramel. Um, it was pretty funny in the sense of the marketing. It was very clever, and I don't want to talk any shit, but it just was not on par with taste. It just was not, unfortunately. Yeah, I was about to Google it and realize I probably don't want the cookies uh, giving me targeted ads based on searching nope. cock protein. Yeah, nope, you gotta go I incognito. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta you go, go incognito. incognito for that one. I was about to type it in, and I'm like, you know, I get some ads already that are ridiculous. Yeah, I don't think you can go out in a uh, public after searching that one up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're a non PC PC podcast here, but Steve, there's a thread that Juan and Lucas and I were in. There was like pages upon pages about just you could just think about everything about Lucas and cock and protein and so we'll just leave it at that yeah we'll leave it at that thank you very much <laughs> so it wasn't like a connor murphy type deal <laughs> i don't know if you guys know know about that but um, no. <laughs> um we'll leave it at that i thought yeah. connor mcgregor when you said that i was like uh yeah yeah <laughs> no yeah it's uh if you don't know what he what he did a uh, Potentially did a few years ago. I don't know if you really did or not, but you know it's related to cock protein, I guess. Interesting. Um, maybe I shouldn't. But, maybe we shouldn't Google that on our cookies. <laughs> definitely not. One, no. do you run ads? Do I run ads? Yeah. Uh, I did only twice. So, do you have it set up as a uh, like for your social media profiles? Is it set up as like a creator profile, as a professional uh, profile, or as a? Um, individual i guess i don't know what the other one's called but uh just a creator uh, okay yeah i was gonna ask like uh how you found organic sales to be able to be totally different between us because with the uh paid profile i can't use like trending audios i can only use like the lamest uh royalty free music so for me um i just did my most of my sales that i've had are just like face to face so I'm like doing a lot of face to face, but you know, with obviously, you know, with the help of like Lucas, Sean, and some other people, you know, it helps me get reach and visibility to outside of uh, Houston, where I'm from. So but my but my main uh, sales drives are from uh, Houston. Hmm. Gotcha. And that's where I get a lot of returning buyers from is from Houston. Yeah. So once we wind down here, I know we we were going to do a podcast last week. You had a what's called a pop up. Was it a gym or talk a student? How'd that go, my friend? Oh, it was, it was from a gym. It, it went good. Uh, I actually have something. I'm I'm not sure if it's going to take off or not. I'm still kind of waiting for contact information. But uh, there might be another cool thing that I might be able to do with my protein. So uh, there's more to come on it. I'm just I'm, I'm waiting to see if uh, the dialogue is, is good or not. Okay. 
But but you said it was fruitful though for the few hours. I think you said you had some sales, right? Oh yeah, no, I, I had a good amount of sales. Um, I didn't want to do samples just because I hate having to keep dipping into my stash. Yeah. But you know, like I said, I saw I saw the guy from uh, it was a guy from State Farm. He was um giving out bad packs, the drawstring bags, and he was giving out water bottles and stuff. And you know, I saw people you know kind of going towards him, and I'm like, nah, we ain't doing that. You don't even got a farm. You're not even, like. Like you in my state, you don't even got a farm. Like we ain't doing this shit. Like nah, Duke, move out the way. Let me start busting out the samples. So when I started busting out the samples, that's whenever they were coming to me. And then you know he packed the shit and left. And I was like, fuck on out of here, man. Like we ain't doing this today. Like nah, you ain't finna outshine me. No. Jake from State Farm hit the hit the bricks. Yeah, like nah, like th this is a gym. It's not a farm. So no, 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 beat it. You didn't call, you didn't call Ludacris. Hey, we ain't doing this shit. Nah, <laughs> we ain't doing this shit. All right, like you gotta go. And it was funny because he started, he took off too. You really yeah. walked up on me, said, "Get the fuck out of my face, State Farm." Yeah, like, like now, nah, like farming with state. Like I'm an all state guy. Get out. I was gonna start talking shit to him, like, "Yo, you know how much I pay for insurance?" Like, what the fuck? Fucking uh -oh. insurance costs as much as my note. Jeez. I do uh, in person sales at the local crunch pretty often, uh, but I was doing them every Thursday, and my problem was that there is a Gatorade energy drink. That would show up at the exact same time as me and they just give away free cases of their energy drink and to the casual gym goer they're like well why would i pay for years when i get theirs for free yeah like thanks dick That's crazy. not for you if you think that gatorade energy drink compares to crystal pump then you're not going to buy my product anyway yeah that's true it was driving like me nuts i'd stop setting up on thursdays and I think I have another one scheduled on the 15th, I think. I got to double check, but I think I have one scheduled on the 15th. I might have another one at another gym. But, yeah, I'm trying to I'm, – I'm, I'm working a lot more on pop-up shops right now at the moment. It's smart because I talk about it all the time. That's where a lot of the brand owners fail. They think, oh, I got 3,000 Instagram followers. I'm going to open up a brand. And I'm going to be a millionaire. But yet they don't go to they don't go to the flea markets they don't go to pop ups they don't go to gyms and that's where they fail and they don't get it they don't they don't want to put in the effort to you know ruin their weekend and get in front of people so I, I kudos to both you guys I think the big thing too is that a lot of times I I still don't get it I think it's just like weird that brand owners just kind of get afraid to be themselves mm -hmm. like they they see what the current trend is what people are gravitating towards and. They try to replicate their brand and themselves based off of that lifestyle or that image that's popular right now. When in reality, man, just be yourself. Like, you're not going to win everybody over. You know, just like, you know, with the crystal pump, right? And with my pre-workout, you're not going to win everybody. You're not. And it's not the end of the world. You know, like, for me, I love low caffeine. I love low caffeine. It's yep. it, like, it gets me going. It, I don't need, I'm not going to be fighting crime at night. I'm not going to be, you know fucking lifting buildings off the ground and shit. Like, I'm not doing none of that. I'm just going to lift some weights and I'm going to go on the, on the Stairmaster. I don't need a crazy amount of caffeine. But to other people, they need that caffeine and they are probably dependent on it. But in reality, it's like not the pre-workout is not going to be for everybody. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Like you're never going to have a product that everyone's going to like. Yeah, that's it. So guys, it's been a pleasure here. Let's let's go around here. Let everybody know where to follow you. If you guys have any sales, specials, anything going on, Steve, lead us off here. Where can people follow you? Promote anything under the sun. <sighs> Started off with the guy who's gonna ramble the longest. No, yeah, uh, <laughs> I've got still got Crystal Pump in stock. Crystalpump.com coming soon. You know, probably by the end of July will be the version two. Uh, if you guys subscribe to my emails, you'll be able to on Crystalpump.com. You'll be able to participate in the survey. That'll come up. That'll be, you know, like a customer survey. See what you guys want to have. Want to see changed. Um, what you definitely don't want changed. I already know that like the majority of the ingredients are things that I don't want to change. But uh, that'll be around the end of July. Still hoping by the end of the year to have a stem-free product. Nice. For me, it's tough because, I mean, these are massive. I've, I've got to do like, you know, thousand uh, unit minimums to be able to get products like Crystal Pump on the market. So it's a massive financial investment for me to do this. So hopefully I can have that massive financial investment by the end of the year to do the stem free. Would love to do that. Um, yeah. Follow me at crystal pump. Otherwise I'll keep talking to you guys. Uh, follow yeah. me at Strongman Steve. You want to watch the Strongman training. I'm doing Georgia's strongest man in five weeks. Sweet. And uh, yeah, keep up with all there. And also I'll speak on your half. You also have a sleep formula, a sleep capsules as well. 
Yes, it's okay. out of stock. Um, I uh, just need more money. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> it's uh, my my minimum orders are up on on everything, so it's just tough yep. to get. Uh, you know, I, I I guess I could just ask other manufacturers too, because I probably could get lower minimums for the sleep product because it's not as a uh, unique a formula as Crystal Pump. Yep, I probably can get the sleep formula from somewhere else, but uh, I am poor. But I love the sleep formula. The sleep formula has a. Uh, I wish that uh. I might just market straight the, the sleep format. People love it, especially for the price, you know, for under 25 bucks to get. Yeah. You can't complain. A nice blend. Did, were you ever able to try it? No, no, I never, I, I never ordered it yet. I have to order it from you. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you know when it's back in stock. Yeah. I've got the wait list for it. People are my, uh, my 30 core customers for the sleep product are waiting. I'm baited breath. <laughs> oh my. And Lucas, what about you, my friend? Hey, get big in the 973 on everything. And uh, of course, check out the website. We're going to be rolling out some stuff in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. Yep. And Juan yourself, sir. Uh, Lucas, are we getting new merch? Listen, man. Not, not to sidetrack, but just real quick. Like, we're getting the new merch? merch? I want to, I've wanted to do a hoodie for the longest time, but it's not the timing with summer coming up. So maybe this winter. Um, the t shirts did well. I liked the, the newer t shirts I did. I think I still have. A, a crap ton of larges in stock. I got to get some more two XLs. Like when I restock and do more merch, um, but maybe end of this year, start of next year. Um, we'll, we'll see some more stuff coming. Maybe some more hats though. I like the hats, but like a new design. Oh yeah, of course. Okay, cool. All right. Of course. Now is the time to order those hoodies though. You know, the, uh, the manufacturer trying to unload that stuff. True. That is a good point. Actually. I didn't really think about that. That is true. Or your acorns for winter, brother. You got to get that stuff together at the price is right. Oh, straight up. No, no, no. That, that is true. I might actually take advantage of that. And so, Mr. in mine, uh, you can find me on Instagram at Gains Express LLC, or you can find my personal page, which is Jay the Gains, where Monday and Fridays I do my memes. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I've kind of like split up my content. You know, I'll do uh, what I'm going to start calling drive through energy reviews powered by Nutrition Depot, which is where I'm trying all their energy drinks. And then my random thought or question that pops up in my head while I'm working out. And then a workout video courtesy of Lives Gym in Houston, Texas. Shout out to them. Shout out to Nutrition Depot. Uh, like I said, um, right now I'm running a sale where you buy the pre-workout. I don't know how my thumb works. You buy the pre-workout, the original pre-gains. And if you, <laughs> if you add a shirt to the cart, the shirt is free. So you get a free shirt on top of that. And... Uh, Sean Lucas, you already know, you place an order on the pre-gains or the protein, I'll throw in a free energy drink for you. It's like a mystery prize. You don't know what you're going to get. And uh, yeah, like I said, you order the pre-gains, the original, and when volume two comes out, automatic half off. I'm still waiting and to get a big refrigerator box delivery with you popping out of it. Oh, <laughs> you know, Whenever you know, I hear one on the show, I mean, it's just the perceived value of everything. It's and then, and then it's crazy. You know, it's, uh, I mean, it's madness uh, when you start to run down that value stack. I know, because uh, I always, I, I do my best to uh, give to give back to people as much as I possibly can, because a lot of times that's what, you know, that's what customers look for. They just want to see, like, what can I get out of you? Like, what kind of value can I give you for, in exchange for my money? And I want to, I want to make sure you come back to me. Yep. And for me, it's subtalk underscore radio. Pay attention to the channel later this week as Lukes and I just did a review earlier on Juan's pre-workout, pre-gains. So stay tuned for that. And uh, as always, thank you so much, folks. Have a great rest of the night. And gents, we'll have you back soon.